Good morning, good morning, good morning, folks. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels, and we're going to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we do, the usual disclaimers and a rant. So I noticed this morning, now that Deb's going to be on Rihanna's show, as per usual, as predicted, everybody and their mother is coming out. Or I should say all the butts are coming out and saying, no, change this, change this queen. And again, I despair for humanity. Because once again, of course, us neurodiverse, we're just automatically monsters, aren't we? Really, folks, really. I am so tired of you all just allowing the media to spoon feed you shit and you never, ever do your own damn research. I, I, I can't even see straight at this point. I can't even see straight. You won't even acknowledge the ableism that is being shoved in your face by Bozy of all people. But now, now, because he's different and I believe her. Why? Why do you believe her? Why do you believe her? The facts don't work. The logic doesn't work. Goddamn common sense doesn't work when it comes to her story. Nothing works. But just believe her. He, he is an abuser. She said so. It's the most illogical argument I've heard in some time. And we're reading Matthew Israel's own words. Neurotypical society. Why are you so damn gullible? You like to sit there and call all of us neurodiverse, autistics, and disabled gullible. Have you ever taken a look in the mirror lately? You just accept at face value whatever the media tells you. As somebody from Generation X. Our very generation fought against this shit. To not buy in and just take whatever the media tells us. We knew young that you couldn't just trust whatever they say. It was more than likely skewed. And we're talking the 90s here. It's only gotten worse, not better. Why do you, neurotypical society, continue to ignore evidence and facts and substitute it with your own reality. And we're the delusional ones? How does that work? How does that fucking work? As an autistic, I do deal in reality, facts, and evidence. I deal in logic, what makes coherent sense. Not hyperbole, not self-righteous posturing, not peer pressure. Because if you think peer pressure is ever going to work on someone like me, good fucking luck. Good luck. Because it's never going to happen. You all have no individuality anymore. You don't think for yourselves. You let the media think for you. And you just believe whatever they say. Blows my mind. See, even my cat's protesting. You hear him? Even the cat's protesting. We are not monsters. We are human beings. Our neurology is different from yours. That does not mean we deserve to be abused. That does not mean we deserve to have the media call us monsters every fucking Tuesday. It sure as hell doesn't mean that you have the right to just call us whatever the hell that you want to. He won. He won on facts, evidence, and goddamn videotape. What the hell else do you want? What else do you want? She lost on facts and evidence, and still you pull this shit. I'm done. I am done. Sorry. 
I really get pissed off when people start coming for one of my own, even when facts and evidence has vindicate them. Still, they yell their stupid shit, but believe all women, I sure as hell won't. I will never allow that neurotypical, narcissistic bitch to ever speak for me. Ever. This woman you all hold up, while meanwhile telling us to check our privilege, check your own damn privilege. You sit there and you scream at men, including men who are in the armed forces, watching their buddies die right next to them. But seriously, all men bad, kill all men? Fuck you. All right, now, folks, to the disclaimers. In the description box, folks, you're going to find a link to the article that the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center doesn't want you to read. It is written by Neuroclastic, a small non-for-profit started by autistics for autistics, wherein they interviewed and surveyed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to the Judge Rotenberg Center's quote-unquote behavioral modification program. Matter of fact, the JRC doesn't want you to read this article so much they have threatened neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit. Blah. If they do not remove it from the website. Neuroclastic has refused to comply. So you know the drill, folks. Please read that article and share on all your social media. You're also going to find the pertinent links to the Agape Boarding School situation. Agape Boarding School is a Christian-themed boarding school based out of Stockton, Missouri that takes in troubled male teens, supposedly. That has impending over 21 lawsuits and allegations. Listen to me. Listen to me, Ambie Stans. Substantiated by independent investigations done by the Missouri Department of Social Services. These allegations include sodomy, sexual assault, child abuse, psychological and emotional abuse. Let's see here. They've also had starvation and child trafficking added to the list. And that's just for starters. We have one former staff member arrested by the FBI. Another, a doctor who still lives on the premises with full access to those poor boys that has multiple substantiated claims of sodomy and sexual assault against the boys there. We have an attorney general too busy kissing Trump's ass and running for Senate to do his goddamn job, who has dropped the ball so spectacularly, it's a wonder he's allowed to still keep his position. So folks, please share those articles on all your social media. Don't forget to sign and share the change.org Shut Agape Boarding School Down petition. We got the pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign as well. Very pertinent right now as we read Matthew Israel's own fucking words. Including Autistic Hoya's massive archive on the subject, the templates, and the ever-present self-explanatory change.org shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. Also included to give the lie to Matthew Israel world words, Jennifer Musumbert's behavioral sheet over shockable offenses. And we also can have clips, a short part of the horrid seven-hour ordeal of Andre McCollins that happened in 2002, where for the crime of refusing to remove his coat, he was shocked to the point that it dropped him to the ground. He was then tied to a four-point board, face down with a helmet on, and shocked over 31 times. Please read those, share on all your social media. When we talk about the JRC, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of it, catch clips of surveillance footage of peoples with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you got young children present, please use your headphones, all right? This channel is marked not for children for a reason. We talk about dark subjects and we use profanity. If your child is 16 and under and they are watching this channel, parental supervision is advised. It is 4.41 a.m. in the morning. I'm already pissed pissed. I have not had my second dose of caffeine either, so we're in dangerous territory, folks. So if I stumble over my words, apologies in advance, all right? Now, before we go on,
for the people who keep accusing Johnny with nothing more than her say so. My question is this, why are you so ready to believe her? With all the evidence to the contrary, with the goddamn videotapes, and don't tell me they're edited. She gave five men's clips. He gave two fucking hours, like per tape, per tape. Her own words that she recorded herself. When I've gone digging, folks, more often than not, he's so weird. And it's always picking apart the very things that make the man neurodiverse. You're all so ready to believe that we're all horrendous, abusive, non-feeling monsters. This is how people like Matthew Israel get away with existing, having their schools exist for so damn long. Because this is what society thinks of us. This is what they think we deserve in one form or another. Or they turn a blind eye to it thinking, maybe it's necessary. You've got to control us after all. I've got your control. Wake up, society. Deal with your own ableism and your own fucking hate before you start going and preaching to others. I am done. Done! Moving on. Where we left off yesterday. Under state and federal law, non oh, I think we looked at this yesterday. The authors of the MDRI report have a strong physiological opposition to aversives. Gee, you fucking think? And it's not philosophical, doctor. Philosophical. Really? Really? It's not a philosophical opposition, you idiot. It's not a philosophy. I know when someone's being tortured right in front of my own eyes, doctor. I know what it looks like. I know what those screams on that video mean. It's not philosophical, it's literal. Presumably, even if treatment with behavioral skin shock were the only treatment that could save a child from maiming or killing one's, him or herself, they would oppose its use. It's not the only treatment! Doctor! It's not the only treatment. Because if that were true, then the whole world would be scrambling over themselves to send kids there. Funny that they're not. You're going to tell the ARC who stands a hundred fucking percent against you that they don't treat kids just as severe as this because I got something to tell you. They treat kids from all over the nation day after day after day after day. They serve a larger population than you can possibly begin to fathom. To sit there and try to say that they have never dealt with kids this severe? Really? Really? Let's also, again, tell you that Matthew Israel is once again lie. Shocker, right? Real shock, right, doctor? We have Jennifer Masamba's behavioral sheet. We know you don't just shock them to save their lives, doctor. We know for a fact that you will shock them for such an offense as rolling their eyes, for standing up without permission, even if it's just to, you know, get their pants or underwear out of the crack of their ass because it happens. They get shocked for breathing wrong, for God's sake. Andre McCollins was not shocked for self-injurious behavior or violent aggression towards another person. He was shocked because he refused to remove his coat. He was shocked because he's screaming due to pain. He was shocked because his muscles stints up. Because what happens when we get fucking electrocuted? Yeah. Yeah. This is not the only treatment, doctor. This is a straw man argument, easily torn apart. Because there are multiple programs out there that work, that do indeed deal with severe self-injurious behavior. Do indeed deal with it, doctor. Only the difference is they use 
logical solution, such as what is triggering the problem. Dealing with that. And then guess what happens? That behavior recurs less often. The fact of the matter is, folks, here's a dash of reality for you. You are never going to eradicate these behaviors entirely out of us. It's never going to happen. As a society, I need you to accept and understand this and deal in reality. What you can do is work with us to deal with the triggering issues that are causing the aggression and self-injurious behavior to help us lessen it to a point to where we're out to live out in the real world. And guess what, doctor? I had real self-injurious issues as a child. I would slam my head into the ground at full force repeatedly. I would slam my hairbrush into my head repeatedly so hard that it would bleed. I have slammed things through doors. I have destroyed pots, pans. I have picked up a full-size couch made from back in the 80s with full solid wood oak, picked it up, and put it through a wall. Don't tell me I don't understand, doctor. I have dug my nails so deep into my arms and drawn them straight down that it has caused me to draw my own blood. But guess what? I was put on the person-centered plan. I had people who cared about me enough to not send me to a torture center and instead use logic and facts in order to find what was triggering those very, very real self-injurious behaviors. And you know what, doctor? Over time, with real work put in, those self-injurious behaviors have been brought down to nigh on to non-existent. The meltdowns have been brought down to such a minimal point that they only help happen when I'm completely and utterly stressed to the gills and overwhelmed. Okay? I've lived successfully on my own, except for a year and a half, since I was 19 years old. People like you would tell me that that would be impossible, though, without your shock torture treatment, right? That's what I needed. You needed to cart my ass off the JRC. No logical, coherent planning in order to find out what was triggering the behaviors. No therapy. No regulating medications. No stimming. No nothing. You know best, right? I've worked in the field, doctor, and I am myself an autistic. I know for a fact, a fact, that these other programs work. I know for a fact you all did not fucking try anything else other than ABA bullshit, which is already built off of a false argument, as I've stated many times, and you. You haven't tried person-centered planning. You don't even know what behavioral reinforcement is, let alone utilize it. All you do is adversives and rewards. It's a punishment-based treatment program, doctor. There's a reason why corporal punishment was removed from public schools in the fucking early 90s. Because it doesn't work. You cannot beat torture, starve, or sleep deprive the disability out of us. It's never going to happen. Okay? It doesn't work. But let's move forward here. Explain to me, doctor, how torture is supposed to save me. I told you what I just did. Let's put a hypothetical up. I'll use me as the straw man here. How would have strapping me to that device 
and shocking me at three times more powerful than a police taser, and that's the low setting of the GED, how that would have helped me in any way deal with those behaviors. It wouldn't have. It wouldn't have, doctor. It would have made my self-loathing that I have struggled with my whole life, the stress, the trauma, the PTSD, a thousand times worse than what it was already, than what it was already, and it was already horrifically bad. You would have taken a problem and turned it to 11. But we would have stopped you from maiming yourself. What, so you can maim me? Explain to me again, doctor, how you torturing me instead of me torturing me changes anything. It doesn't. It doesn't compute. It doesn't make sense. Indeed, Dr. Freda Brown, one of the key persons who provided information to the authors of the MDRI report, was involved in such a case. We've already gone over Dr. Freda Brown and the fact that she's so embedded with the medical model she can't even fucking see straight. Okay? Please spare me if using well-known ableist doctors as your defense. In that case, a young man who was maiming himself through self-abusive scratching until he received effective treatment with behavioral skin shock at JRC. Jesus Christ. So, you'd rather electrocute him and then have him scratch himself. Because that makes it better. Unfortunately, anti-adverse advocates persuaded his parents that he no longer needed the treatment and could live with a supported apartment where adversives were no longer available. Without adversive, however, his self-abusive scratching, causing blood and bone infection and eventual paralysis resumed and caused him a pre painful and premature death at 25. No, doctor, that's your fault. You really gonna blame us? Really? 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 Let's not think about the fact that being in your center for years, being tortured for years, causes this little thing called PTSD. As a someone who has that diagnosis and knowing how suicidal I was when I was a kid due to trauma. Do you not understand how trauma works, doctor? Even when one is in a safe space and no longer under threat, those PTSD triggers, those memories, they come out to haunt you. You caused him PTSD, which led to his death, doctor, because you never taught him how to deal with the triggers that were causing the behaviors. Let's talk about advocates for a minute. Not every advocate in the world is quite enough really well-versed in what other treatments are out there. Was there something that could have been used to help this person? I don't know. I'll be honest. But leaving him on a device that tortured him for the rest of his life is not a fucking answer. We could have saved him from a premature, horrible death due to infection by shocking him to death. What about the six kids that are dead at your fingertips, doctor? What about Linda Cornelson? What about the six dead kids? They were still on your adversive treatments at the time. Did it save their lives? What about the people you've made suicidal, like Jennifer Masamba, Andre McCollins, Tori, all the other advocates who come to speak against you? What about them, doctor? What about the entire time he was stuck in your hellhole, the fact that you tortured him through a traumatization from staff jumping out at him? Do you know how fucking paranoid that makes a human being? By the way, abuse survivor, I know. I still deal with paranoia. I still deal with irrational fear because of PTSD. Every day. 
every day. You can't put that on us. His death is not at our doorstep, it's at yours. We got him out of that hellhole. But the damage you bastards did to him. That sticks around, doctor. PTSD, it's a lifelong diagnosis. How dare you put that at our doorstep? How dare you sit there and say, we could torture him into being better. Our torture would have saved his life. Bullshit. What happened to those six kids, doctor? Why are they still not here if it's so life-saving? Hmm? Explain Jennifer Masumpa's success after leaving your hellhole. What about all the other kids' success after leaving your program and entering into other programs? And no, folks, they're not just signing up for positive behavioral reinforcement. And let's talk about that for a minute. It's embedded in ABA now, but it's still built off the premise that we have to pretend to be someone else every single day of our lives, and it still does not deal with the triggering issues. As long as those stay there, as long as those are never dealt with properly. Guess what? How fucking dare you? We are trying to save these kids from the fucking monsters you brainwashed into saying, keep him tied, it makes him well. Yes, I'm sorry, but that Metallica song is very relevant here. Torturing us does not make us doc better, doctor. It will never make us better. That student died because of you. Because you tortured him for years on end with fucking impunity. You starved him. You traumatized him. You sleep deprived him. And by the time we got him out, the damage had already been done. Do you not understand how PTSD works? Because it's a killer. If you don't believe me, go ask the Vietnam vets. I'm going to close out on that. We don't get very many views on this channel, especially on this subject. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So please don't forget to hit the like button, hit subscribe, and don't forget to hit the comments. Do appreciate your time this morning. As always, we here at Spilling Tea hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.